Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. My name is Rafael Acosta. And today, I'm going to talk about an image of a cartoon frog that has become one of the most important political symbols of our time. <laughs> yes, these are the times we live in. So let's start. Pepe the Frog originally got big in 4chan around the year 2007-2008. And, and he really got big over there. Seven years later, he got big on 4chan. And sorry, he got big on Tumblr. Now Tumblr absolutely deserves its reputation as a dystopian backwater of SJW nonsense. SJW, for those of you who don't know, is social justice warriors. I could spend an hour talking about them, but that's our topic. But there are regular people using it too. And, and it's quite apparent that many of the teens really like using daily rare pepes and mega pepes. In the article's own words, numbers like daily rare pepes and mega pepes sprung up to provide the masses with dank new pepe memes that they create, help bring the frog at the top of this year's Tumblr meme ranking. Seven years after he got big on 4chan. This is quite, this is actually very unusual. I mean, usually memes have a really short lifespan from a few weeks to a month, maybe two or three if they are really lucky. But Pepe is different. Pepe has an endearing quality. It's so endearing, in fact, that he has transcended being a mere meme. But we'll get back on to that a bit later. Because Pepe can be used for anything, he tends to be used. See? He tends to be used um, change everywhere, including by celebrities such as David, such as Katy Perry and David Duchovny. For those of you who don't know, the latter is an American actor, screenwriter, songwriter, etc., etc. He is famous for playing Fox Mold on the X on the X Files. But he really became huge. And by huge, I mean the internet went absolutely wild when Trump, Donald Trump, tweeted out this. You can't stop the Trump video with a logo of Pepe the Frog as Donald Trump. This was followed, the internet went similarly crazy when his son, Donald Trump Jr., tweeted out this. What do you think? Dank. Partisans on both sides of the aisle, the left, the right, progressive, the conservative, they all found this to be a newsworthy event. And there was article after article written about it, about whether Trump actually understood what meme magic was and did in fact praise Keck. Or decry every single use of Pepe as racism. You'll understand why later. So, on Monday, on sorry, on Monday night, Newsweek's executive editor, Margarita Noriega, was accused of racism. A crime? Tell him that. A popular meme of a cartoon frog known as Pepe. This anti-meme hysteria. Before that, actually, I want to ask you a question. Simple question. How does sharing an image of a cartoon frog count as racism? How is it? It makes absolutely no sense. It's a joke. But this gets even more ludicrous later on. This gets so ludicrous, in fact, that the Hillary campaign, after being nearly silent for almost for a few months, came out with Hillary Clinton. I'm sorry. Next slide. We came so great that it the Hillary campaign decided to have to address it with Hillary Clinton making oblique references to Pepe in her alt-right speech and her website is carrying the following article. Donald Trump, Pepe the Frog and White Supremacy and explainer. That cartoon frog 
is more sinister than you might realize. Let's read this, shall we? Why is there a frog standing directly beside Trump? Did you want to know why? That's the image. That's Pepe. Is a symbol associated with white supremacy. Wait, what? Really? White supremacy? That's right. Please explain. Here's a short version. Pepe the Carpet Frog is a carpet frog who began his internet life as an in simple internet enjoyed by teenagers and pop stars alike, as we've seen previously. But in recent months, Pepe the Frog has been almost entirely co-opted by white supremacists who call themselves the alt-right. They've had Big Bad Pepe by added swastikas and other symbols of anti-Semitism and white propaganda. We basically mix Pepe with Nazi propaganda, etc. We built that association. One prominent white supremacist told the Daily Beast. That's a newspaper. Uh, internet newspaper paper for those of you who don't know. This is, I have to say, one of the most ridiculous things I have ever heard. To say that Pepe had been entirely co-opted by white supremacists shows how out of touch these people were. They only saw white supremacist memes because you only show them white supremacist memes. Across the entire internet, there are millions, and I do mean millions, of pepes. Each one designed to convey a particular message to a particular group. And every single person knew it, or at least those of us who knew the internet. I'm following this. To see the Clinton campaign actively declare war on memes. An event that became so ludicrous when the anti defamation league added Pepe the Frog to their hate symbol database. <laughs> it was an event so ludicrous that it made the people involved figures of fun and ridicule all across the internet. Whether it was 4chan, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, whatever. They were being made fun of, they were being made, they were ridiculed and they were looked and they were a bunch of fools. And this is because it's simply not possible to declare war on memes and come out on the other side looking anything other than a total bloody idiot. <laughs> Anyway, when McDonald's, after seeing their declining sales, declared themselves a modern and progressive burger company, their direct competitor, Wendy's, tweeted out this. That is a Pepe icon, dressed in the colors of the Wendy logo. This, ladies and gentlemen, became such an important point, became such an important symbol that many progressive and left media outlets showed and published article after article after article after article after article about this. The pressure became so great that when he deleted the tweet, fired the manager and claimed he simply did not know what it was about. But the damage had been done. At the very least, the media manager was not on board with the prevailing narrative and he was showing it by tweeting out a Pepe. Yes. Now, in wake of the Desperate witch hunt to find out why the Hillary campaign failed. A campaign which I might remind you cost 1.3 billion US dollars to fail. And despite a complete and utter lack of evidence, 
they decided to firmly point a finger at one Vladimir Putin. Does anyone not know who he is? Exactly. Awesome guy. So, when the Russian embassy tweets out this, in today's papers, Pandit's call on Theresa May to disrupt a possible Russian-US talk. No trust in Britain's best friend and ally. It becomes a political message on several different levels. Not only is it saying that there is absolutely no need to intervene in a Russian-US deal, it is also a message. It is also a message to the progressives. It is a statement to the progressives because they know that the progressives have outright declared Pepe the Frog as a symbol of hate. So, when anyone uses this, when anyone tweets out this, they have to respond, they have to attack. Because to them, any use of Pepe the Frog is a sign of disrespect. So, both Vox and Politico are absolutely on the money when they say that the Russian embassy trolls US-UK election. US and UK by tweeting out that guy. And despite what this then that would have you believe the guy actually created an Pepe the Frog doesn't actually mind. In his own words, I just got cool. In fact, I'm getting kind of inspired by all the weird interpretations of it. And that is the essence of Pepe. Pepe can be used to do anything. There are, of course, many anti Semitic versions of Pepe, but that is because it is a joke. And if you take a joke seriously, the fault lies with you and not the person telling the joke. That's a message to remember. There are various communities that use Pepe. Think about it. Trump, the US Army, is message against Islam, and that's just a troll anyone in the UK. And I can give you hundreds and hundreds and hundreds more. Because there is almost an unlimited amount of Pepe's on the internet. Each one designed to deliver a specific message from a certain group to a certain group. And they will always exist because there is absolutely nothing like a smug looking frog not giving a damn about your sacred cows. This has given rise to Pepe. He is transcended being a mere meme. He is in fact a symbol of rebellion. He is a symbol to say, we do not agree with what the media is telling us, with what the people in charge are telling us. Pepe the Frog is now a counter-culture icon. Ladies and gentlemen, Pepe the Frog is undoubtedly a counter-culture icon. To end this, I have to say that the US and the UK are just a Western civilization in general. The mainstream media of them have fallen victim to a trolling campaign that was never actually designed to troll them. They have willingly said, no, no, any, any, any kind, any instance of this smug looking frog not giving a damn about my feelings is now an offense against me. And now, when anyone, and I do mean anyone, uses a Pepe, they are obligated to respond. They are obligated to get enraged. This, my friends, is almost too easy. 
This is foolishness on behalf of the mainstream media. On the behalf of anyone that sits down on a computer and gets enraged about an internet meme. You have played yourselves. You have handed the people who want to make you look foolish the perfect method of making you look foolish. Cut it out. It's a meme. It's a meme. You all should know better. <laughs> Take note of this, ladies and gentlemen. And remember this message. Thank you very much.